Hi there! Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this tutorial, we will talk about the Microsoft Excel Solver function. This is a continuation from my previous video, Goal Seek, where we use the Goal Seek functionality to change one variable to get a predetermined result. In this video, we will see how to use a solver functionality to change multiple variables to get a predetermined result. But then we will also see how to activate the solver add-in to our Microsoft Excel workbook. We will learn how to use the solver functionality with a basic example. And we will see in which situations we, we can use different solver methods based on the type of data model that you have. Have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? If you're yet to do so, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up like this video drop a comment in the comment section about what you think of this video and what other content you would like me to put up on my youtube channel and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when awesome contents are uploaded let us get started it's called the solver functionality in microsoft excel if you can see on the data tab, of course, from where we found the goal seek functionality right here, you can also see that we cannot find the solver functionality. This is because solver is an add-in in Microsoft Excel and it is not turned on automatically. The add-ins in Excel, such as solver, has to be turned on by the user of Microsoft Excel before you can view it. And how to turn on the solver functionality is what we are going to do right now. So you go to your file tab here and you click on options. And in this dialog box that you can see, you click on add-ins. And in the add-in um, options that have come up, when I scroll down, you can see the list of active and inactive add-ins. You can see the active application add-ins. It says there is no active application add-ins. This means personally, I have not activated any application add-ins yet. And these are the inactive application add-ins that we have, that I have. And we can see that solver is one of them. The solver add-in is one of them. So I select this and I come down to this manage um, section. I click on the drop down. I select Excel add-ins because this is what the solver add-in is. It is an Excel add-in type just like we can see right here. And I click on go. And then we can see another small dialog box like we have right here popping up. And in this dialog box, what we need to do is to check the box that is beside the solver add-in. After checking this box, you click on okay. And the solver add-in should be added automatically to your Microsoft Excel, just like I have here. So this is the solver add-in that we are going to use to manipulate the data that we have in front of us to change multiple variables to get a particular desired result that we need. First of all, let us use the add-in, the solver add-in to do the same thing we did with the goal seek in the previous video. So I'm going to open the solver add-in just right here i am going to set your required to set your objectives but in this case this is what my objective is this is what i want to change so i have just selected that cell two you can choose a maximum you can choose a minimum value but i want to choose changing setting my objective to a specific value of twenty thousand us dollars by changing variable cells. So you can choose the cells that you want to change. And you see it's in the plural form, by changing variable cells. But in this particular example, which is the basic form of using the solver add-in, I'm just going to change one cell. And let us also change the percentage for safety and security as a continuation of the previous video that we did. And by the way, the link to the previous video, how to use Goal Seek, is right in the description box. You can click on that link to watch the video and understand how to use the Goal Seek functionality. And after selecting this, all you need to do is to click on solve and let us see what we have right here. So the solver functionality has given us the desired output and I am just going to click on OK to accept this result. 
So of course, we can see that Solva is giving us the same result as GoSeq. Even though Solva can do much more, which is changing multiple variables, which we are going to see in other examples very short. We have the support cost details for a fictitious company that is managing four projects. And of course, we know that for projects managed by a company, they need to pay a portion of the support costs. And for support costs, I mean costs like rent, utilities, stationaries, repair and maintenance. There are other type of support costs that should be considered across projects. But for the purpose of this particular example, we will stick to these four different types of support costs. So the idea is spreading the support cost across all the projects that is managed by this fictitious company. And we can see some constraints right here that the total support budget should not exceed 1 million Naira. So for this example, the currency we are using is the Nigerian Naira. The total support budget should not exceed 1 million Naira. And we can see right here, this is already more than 1 million Naira. So we need to find a way to reduce this total support costs to be 1 million Naira. The next constraint is that on each, on each of the projects, which we have here, rehabilitation of property, agriculture, skills acquisition, and rehabilitation of boreholes. On each project, the rent should remain at 100,000 Naira only. So not more than 100,000. And the third constraint is that the utilities costs for each project should not exceed 60,000 Naira. Okay, so we have this one exceeding 60,000 Naira already. And the next constraint is that the total support cost for each project should not exceed this amount. So this means that this total cost for each of these projects should not exceed 270,000 Naira. How do we achieve um, the results based on these constraints that we have? Of course, if we want to um, do this manually, it's not going to be very easy for us, but we can use the solver um, functionality in Microsoft Excel to achieve um, this result in a few minutes. And we are going to see how to do that. The first thing is looking for the solver. Of course, the solver functionality is in the data tab and you can see it right here. I click on solver and First of all, my objective is this. I have selected my objectives and I'm setting my objectives to a specific value. Now for the maximum, you can, you can maximize your objective. So in real life, profit is what is mostly maximized. Um, and then you choose minimize if you have to minimize your costs. But then in this example, I know the specific value that I need. So this is why I'm selecting value of, and I'm just going to type the total value, which I'm expecting to be 1 million Naira, just like this. And then the next thing you need to do is you change, you select the variable cells that you want to change, right? So by changing variable cells, in the first place, I want... Um, the rent to remain at one, 100,000 Naira. So I want to change the, the rent cells. I put the comma separator. The next thing I want to change is the utilities. So I select the utilities. I put the comma separator. And the next um, set of cells that I want to change is repair and maintenance. Now, someone would ask, why did I not select the total support cost cells to change and this is because you cannot change a cell that has a formula so it is similar to the goal seek function where you cannot change a cell that has a formula it has to just be a numeric value and not a formula and i go to the next section which is the constraint and i add just right here i click on add and i am selecting my um I'm going to select the cells that I want to apply the constraints to. So the first one is the rent. And here it says less than or equal to. 
less than or equal to a hundred thousand naira for the rent i click on add because i have more constraints the next constraint is the utilities cost for each project should not exceed sixty thousand i select all my utilities less than or equal to is fine for me and i select this as my constraint i click on add because i have one more constraint to work with the total support cost for each project should not exceed 270,000 Naira. So I select all my total support cost cells, less than or equal to is perfect. But of course I can click on the drop down so you see other options. But in this case, the less than or equal to symbol is just what I need. And my constraint is this. And I click on okay because I have finished adding all my constraints. So right here, the next thing that we can see is make unconstrained variables non-negative. You want to keep this box checked because I do not want to have negative, I do not want to have a negative rent. Of course, I do not want to have negative values for utilities or stationaries or repair and maintenance. So I'm going to keep this box checked. The next part is selecting a solving method. By default, Microsoft Excel has selected for us the GRG nonlinear method. And clicking on the drop down, we can see that there are other methods, which is the simplex LP, and we also have the evolutionary method. So, what does this mean, and how do we know which method to choose at a particular point in time? The first method, which is the GRG, GRG stands for generalized reduced gradient. Okay, so basically what this model, just like we can see on the screen, this model that we have right here shows you that this is non-linear to start with, of course. And this model, okay, tries to identify the highest point or the lowest point or a specific value in your, in your model that you have written out. The GRG non-linear solver method okay in the solver functionality tries to determine for you the highest point or the lowest point or a specific value and it is very useful of course for nonlinear models as well as linear models the next one is a simplex lp and lp stands for linear programming just like we can see a linear model that we have on the on the screen right now so the simplex lp method gives you a result for a linear model only. So if you have a linear model, of course, you can use the simplex LP. The third one is the evolutionary. As you go up the graph, you have the first highest point. You come down, you see the lowest point, and you go up the graph again, you see the second highest point. So the evolutionary method in the solver functionality helps you to find the, the highest point and it goes down and up the model to see the most optimal highest or lowest point. Now, a drawback for this particular method is that it takes a lot of computing time. This is because it has to go across the model to find the highest point, the, the most optimal highest point and the most optimal lowest point as the case may be. For this example, the solver method I am selecting is the GRG nonlinear method. This is because of the advantage it has to solve both linear and nonlinear problems. Having made all the selections I have made, I will just click on solve and we can see that solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. And when I shift this dialog box, we can see right here, the total support costs is now 1 million Naira only. So this is the solver solution that has been found. I can choose to restore original values, which is to go back to what I had or to keep the solver solution. For the purpose of this example, I choose to keep the solver solution and I select OK. So we can see how solver can be used to change multiple variables to achieve a predetermined solution. We can see that the rent has been adjusted for each of the project. We have an equal amount of rent charged to it. For the utilities, for each of the projects, we do not have any utility charge that is above 60,000 Naira. 
and the total support cost for each of the projects does not exceed 270,000 Naira. Did you like the video you just saw? Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up. Also, drop your comments in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this video. And, of course, hit the notification bell so you will be notified when awesome contents like this are uploaded in the future. Please share this, this video with your friends and see you in another video.